Everybody, hello friends. I am A-Track, and he is... <laughs> <laughs> he is Rammstein, Rammstein. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, live in concert. <laughs> Our mind, I'm, in my metal, I'm in my metal head phase right now. As you should. Yeah. We are Duck Sauce. We're gonna hang out. How are you doing today, Armand? I'm good. It's been quite a night, quite a day today for me. Long day. Long year. <laughs> Long year. <laughs> Very interesting year. I, the funny thing is I always think about what's 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Mm-hmm. When we look back at this year, you know what I'm saying? I'm always curious yeah. as to what's the interpretation, you know? And is it going to be officially the worst year ever? <laughs> you know the way it feels, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Like, is it yeah, really yeah, going to yeah, win that award? 2020, <laughs> worst year ever. Is it going to win, yeah. you know? I think one thing that we've all found is at least by enjoying nice little moments we're able to yeah. get through the madness and and i know mm-hmm. i've enjoyed all these talks a lot we get to hang and catch up and dig yeah. into our little curious minds you know in on that note we're going to talk about some recipes put the sauce on it I feel like every week we say the same thing where we say neither of us really knows how to cook, but that's kind of what's fun. So we each have maybe an appreciation for certain types of cuisine, and this is how we kind of figure it out for ourselves. My, what I'm going to share today is is an eggplant salad that I've kind of figured out for myself. It wasn't really based on a recipe. I was doing similar things with other vegetables, and then I was thinking about things that I would eat at maybe an Italian restaurant, a Mediterranean restaurant. I've kind of realized that there's something about eggplants where if you grew up in certain cultures, some people grow up with eggplants a lot. Other people have no idea what an, what an eggplant is. <laughs> and some people even call it an aubergine, mm-hmm. right? But, yeah. but uh, the, the way that I've been cooking, one of the ways I've cooked eggplants, you take one whole eggplant, dice it, you know, like I'll, I'll cut it into long slices, dice it up. Then I get these cubes in a pan, heat up some olive oil, throw all the cubes of eggplants on, on the on the pan. Let that cook for a little bit, you know, flip the cubes over periodically. You wanna get it to a point, the surface of the eggplant is getting almost translucent or, you know, it, it grills a bit, but there's something about, it, it looks kind of oily and almost see-through when it gets, you know, when it's cooked enough. And as it's cooking, I'll throw on some salt and pepper, easy stuff. And then what I do is I take a can of diced tomatoes and I'll throw in half a can, keep the rest in the fridge for something else. So half a can of diced tomatoes, and then I'll, I'll lower the heat, add some oregano and even more salt and pepper and just let that simmer kind of as long as you want, at least 10 minutes. After about 10 minutes or so, actually, if you let it cook even longer, it might even get a little sweet. But after a good 10, 15 minutes, you get a salad that's really lovely. It's one of those things where you can serve it either hot or cold. Whatever's left, stick it in the fridge, have it the next day cold. It's just as good cold, little little salad bag. What about you? So for me, um, today, I bring you the caprese sandwich. So, (laughs) sourdough bread, okay? Not enriched. Go to go to the expensive place. Get the expensive bread. Don't 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 short game on your bread. It can be already sliced. It's not a big deal. Sourdough bread, fresh mozzarella. I mean, fresh mozzarella. Like it, it's either has to be sitting in a plastic container in water and like it's the big ball, the one that's yep. like like a fist, or you yep. can they have it refrigerated in the refrigerated section. It's wrapped in the plastic and it just looks like a big looks like a overgrown egg. Yeah. So one of those two, you get grab that. Make sure it's fresh. You know. And then yeah. um, a beautiful Roma tomato, the round Roma tomatoes, uh, olive oil. So I'll mm-hmm. say olive oil for me, but you don't have to do the olive oil. Uh, basil, basil, arugula, and the key, key ingredient is right here. And so, again, I'm not making, don't have the time to make pesto, okay? Uh, I don't know if you can see yep. that. Yeah, basil Perfect. pesto, okay? Genovese. You get, you get this bad boy. You can make this thing in like a minute. A couple ways you do it. I do it in the toaster oven, so this creates its own way but you can also do it if you have a um a saute pan with the grill grooves and you you mm-hmm. know what i mean this mm-hmm. and, and and then you have the the thing like for burgers that has the with the grooves in it yep that's also a great way you can make it's it right on the press skillet. it's a skillet. it's a iron skillet with the lines thing you can do that for the bread too 
You know what I mean? So yeah. to, 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 to make this, to make the sandwich, it's supposed to be, I make it hot. So I make it like melty, not, not yeah, crazy yeah. melty. But anyway, so you take the, um, basically, you know, the two, lo- two pieces of bread, you cut the mozzarella, the big ball looking mozzarella. You just cut it into about, I'd say half inch slices, like mm. all the way through the whole thing. And base, basically for this one, it's just, you only need two half inch slices. So you don't even need, mm. it's not using the whole, you just wrap that back up through it in the fridge. <laughs> and then um, those two. Um, um, but the first thing you want to do is you want to put the pesto on the bread. So you, you take the pesto, you put that on the bread, then you, you put the mozzarella on top of the pesto, and then you slice the Roma tomato big. like So it kind of matches the size mm-hmm. of the mozzarella. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's mm-hmm. somewhat in that vicinity and it's, yep. it's kind of this, it's almost like the same thickness it could be a quarter inch half an inch somewhere in there same thing mm. two mm. of those boom on top boom, boom. and that's it and then you know put it all together throw in the toaster oven the toaster oven um will toast the bread and warm it up a bit and the mozzarella will will melt a, a bit and still in the middle it won't really get super you don't want to like melt the whole like you don't want the thing dripping down in the toaster no. you want to get it nice and warm and then when it comes out if you have the iron grill thing you can smush it right out of the toaster i just do it with my hand <laughs> so yeah. i just when it comes out i just take it and i kind of smush it down and it gets all pretty and the cheese is melted and you cut it in mm. half and you, you look at it, it looks like the flag of italy <laughs> oh oh and okay. i forgot i forgot i forgot the basil and arugula sorry you put no, the basil you said in it, you said it. Yeah, but you got to put that on top. All of this before yeah. it goes in the toaster. Oven. So okay. a little basil, a, some arugula, all of that, and then for some reason it's it's totally crazy. But in the skillet, it's even crazier. So, mm. There it is, caprese sandwich. <laughs> Love it. Should we uh, take things to uh, to the cosmos? Let's do the cosmos. <laughs> Should Let's we interrogate do... the stars? Yes. Eight tracks in Aries, and I'm an Aquarius. I'm Spock, he's Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> and we traverse the galaxy together. <laughs> All right, so. Thank you. Right now, the world is arranged to push you into defensiveness and fear, to encourage hardness and competition, to make you believe your safety can only come at the expense of someone else's. This week, though, you will have the power to see through all that. You'll experience moments of connection, support, and much-needed kindness. Pay attention to these moments. Remember how good generosity feels. The way to survive all this won't be to outrun and outsmart all the others, but to build relationships, to share what strength you have, and to let others share theirs with you. I like that, yeah. Because it's my, my, my natural inclination is to charge ahead like the ram that I but am. I, I, but I love that about you. <laughs> <laughs> you get a kick out of it. I love it. But, but I get, you know yeah. what? But, I, but you always help me balance out. And I think you you always help me also see the other side of things and, and enjoy, you know, the compassion well, likewise. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you bring me the go-getter action, like you said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, run, run, in, run into everything head first, which, <laughs> which I may not have. And you give me that. And I'm any, every time we've done it, it's yeah. always worked and it's been super fun. And, you know, yeah. it. don't, don't change. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, so let, let's, let's, yeah. let's take it to your, um, to your, uh, uh, stars. So here's the Aquarius weekly horoscope for, for Armand. It could be simple enough to accept the ebb and flow of your energy over a day or a week. Mood shifts and feelings fluctuate. There's nothing to be frightened of, but it's so much harder to live with the fluctuations that happen over long periods of time. When a bad feeling lasts long enough, you can start to fear that it's permanent. A long enough season of sorrow can trick you into believing it isn't a season at all, but the enduring state of your life. Right now, everything may feel permanent and irreversible, but it's not. You're still in motion, and so is the world. This isn't the end yet. I, yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I know that. And yeah, you, you know, know that. I do know that, yeah. And so, but true, I mean, yeah. 
All right. So for this week's uh, Duck Talk conversation here on Duck Duck Goose, we went even a little further out of our orbit and, and we talked to a karate specialist. We tracked down Yusuke Nagano, who, uh, aside from being a double black belt karate yeah. expert himself, he also is uh, known for an online school, online YouTube channel called Karate Dojo Waku. I mean, Armand, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at this point we're just reaching out to people that we've probably had some sort of urge to have conversations going a little bit outside of our comfort zone and, and yeah. you know, digging into the curiosity of, yeah. of the world. Yeah, I mean, karate has been big forever in terms of like my history. It's a word that's not uh, spoken of as much anymore. Everything's gotten broken down to these little new words for martial arts. Yeah. But this, this thing, it's that thing. It's all, it's like, yeah. it was, it, it was all house music. Now it's deep house, hard house. <laughs> <laughs> progressive house tropical tech house mini, mini, yeah. mini mile <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened man but it used yeah. to just all be house it used to just be everything was karate and we didn't know anything else yeah. but it's all good yeah yeah exactly it's, it's, it was all around us in our childhood and it's fun yeah. to dig into it let's bring in Yusuke <laughs> alright what's up everybody so we've got our friend Yusuke from Karaji Dojo Waku with us, joining us. How you doing? I'm uh, doing great. Thanks for having me today. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. I imagine yeah, this thank, might thank be. You. Thanks for being. Yeah, our, our, our mom's with us too. I'm, I'm, this must be a little different from other conversations uh, <laughs> you have. But you know what? For us, it's different too. So we're just gonna have fun with it. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, I guess just to start it off, yet yeah, I'm not even sure how much you know about the music that Armand and I make, but, you know, we're also just kind of curious individuals in general in life. Mm -hmm. I mean, on one hand, I think the fact that we, you specialize in a discipline, we specialize in a discipline. I'm sure there's things we can talk about parallels like mm -hmm. that, but also we're just into learning about stuff. And that's what we're doing on this YouTube series. And we wanted to talk to some sort of martial arts specialist. And here great, we are, great. one of us, uh, uh, ended up on your YouTube channel and we were curious to talk oh, to you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, guys, I was wondering because, you know, we have, I thought we had nothing in common with them. <laughs> was, at first, you, you know, uh, you guys email me yeah. and like, I just couldn't picture what I was going to talk about. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, now that you talk, <laughs> now that you talk about the discipline part, yeah, maybe there will be some common points that we can, you know, all talk about today. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to maybe introduce yourself a little bit for our audience that might not know what you do? Tell okay. us about yourself. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Yusuke. And I currently live in Japan right now. And I have my YouTube channel called Karate Dojo Waku. So maybe someone can put the link <laughs> up here. Yeah. But um, so what we do is we have tutorial videos of karate. And my background is in a karate organization called KO Mita Club, which is the oldest karate organization in Japan. And I trained there and currently I coach at a high school and middle school there. So I guess my profession will be a karate coach. And if you guys can check out my channel, I post um, almost daily on um, sparring videos and kata videos. What kata is, is like a sequence of movements that you do in karate. And it, it, there's 26 of them. So we learned that, and by learning those, uh, we're able to um, learn how to move our body so that it works in sparring as well. So yeah, that's mm. what I do. And, and you yourself are black belt. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I'm a black belt. Uh, ni, ni dan. It's okay. the second so, level. Double yeah. black belt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> double black belt. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, the double whopper. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> With cheese. I guess so, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, maybe yeah, feel free to brag a little bit about what you've achieved yourself as, you know, in, in your own karate uh, exploits. Oh. What's, uh, what have you won? Did you, did you, you know, when did, did you compete when you were really young? Like, what's, what was your process like? Mm. So my, my competition, well, I competed in, within Japan. I, mm -hmm. I did a little bit of karate in the U.S. as well, actually. But then oh, cool. That was when I was very, very little, and that wasn't nothing you know, very serious. I just did mm -hmm. it for fun. 
Mm -hmm. I came back to Japan and I usually compete in the kata tournament to win, um, you know, medals and stuff. Okay. And I guess my biggest achievement would be more for as a, as a coach. And the first school that I coached at wasn't a, like a super strong school, but, um, I took my teeth, well, you know, I, I optimized my teaching methods and I took them to the, nat um, the tournament under national. So I guess in, in our, in Japan, we call it regional tournament, but usually my team would be, wouldn't even end up in the very good tier of the mm -hmm. state tournament. Mm -hmm. But we won that and then we went up to the regional and I think we won eighth place. So I think that was very a, a huge thing for the school back then. So I guess that's, cool. that's one of the right achievements that I had. And yeah, obviously I've been um, you know, having coaching a lot of students to get their black belt. Mm. So that's what gives me the motivation to keep on going. Cool. How long did it take you from when you first started karate to getting your first black belt? How long did that, did that take you? Um, three years, I think. Okay. Three, four years, right. Okay, I, I have and, a question too. I have a friend that sure. was a black belt in karate mm. when I was growing up, when I was young. And he said that the hardest belt is to get black. He said it's, pur it's purple than black, right? Um, that all depends on the organization, actually. Oh, okay, got it. Because well, there's so said, many styles and yeah, sure, sure. But he said black. He said by far the jump to black was the hardest. Correct? Yeah. That, I guess that's all true. You know, regardless yeah. of any style that you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. There's usually well, it all depends. But um, the most, I guess, common karate that you see around the world, my in my opinion, is Kyokushin karate. Maybe so, sure, are you guys sure. are familiar with the phrase. Um, no. Not sure. Not, not really. <laughs> but their, um, their karate style has a lot of belts. So they start with white. And then I'm yeah. not sure what the color, but they, with them blue, green, orange, yeah. yellow, and yeah, all yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. But the, yeah. the one I went to only had three. It was, simple. Oh, it was okay. just white, brown, black, and that's it. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. wow. Okay. So okay. it took a lot of time to get through all, each belt. I, I mm. agree. So yeah. each time yeah. I get a new belt, it, that's a huge, you know, achievement for us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. And then, what's the history of, of karate, if you don't mind? Like, oh, uh, right. Like, I have a slight idea, but I, I feel like it's originally based in kung fu and, and moved to Japan. But I'm not entirely uh, sure if that's the history. So, so uh, there's a small island on the south tip of Japan. It's called Okinawa. Yeah, mm -hmm. right now it's, a, it's, it's, it's known as a resort there. island. Yes, there's yeah. a military. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So the Okinawan people had their influence from China back mm -hmm. back in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. I don't know, not mm -hmm. 1980s, 1800s, 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 1800
and there's a guy called Gichin Funakoshi he, who also spoke Japanese because back then they spoke different languages. So ah, Funan- yeah. Gichin Funakoshi became the bridge between Okinawa and Tokyo, or I guess mainland Japan, to bring karate to Tokyo. And then that, that started the whole um, spread of karate within Japan. And Gichin Funakoshi was the founder of the organization that I trained at, which was founded in 1924. From mm-hmm. there, karate spread to the mainland Japan from the three main original style to more and more styles within the mainland Japan. And then now it's pretty much all over the world, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. For I sure. didn't realize yeah. that the, that karate didn't, that the history was so recent, uh, you know, just in the it 20th is. century. So one, yeah. One of the things that I wanted to kind of talk about as far as our perception in North America of martial arts in karate, you know, I think growing up in, uh, I grew up in Canada, Armand grew up mostly in, in the U S and, you know, I think in our childhood, a lot of people practiced martial arts. It, it, it really penetrated like mm. sort of almost suburban life or, or, or life in a lot of cities. Most shopping malls would have some sort of really? martial arts. Yeah. Studio where people wow. could, could learn. And it just somehow, you know, by the seventies and eighties and, you know, I grew up more in the eighties and nineties myself. It was so present, but I find that when I think about that now between karate, judo, taekwondo, um, whatever else I'm not thinking about. I mean, Muay Thai, I know is different, but you know, a lot of, a lot of the, and Kung Fu, uh, I don't have a full understanding of what, you know, in how each one is different. Uh, Aside from the fact that there, some of them are from different countries. I, I, I think Taekwondo is Korea, right? And, yes, and yes. Um, Kung Fu is what is Chinese. It's Chinese, 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 yes. Yeah, Chinese. So aside from just a, a, a country differentiation, mm-hmm. all I know is we grew up. It, it, it was everywhere around us. And at school, oh, wow. there was always kids. There was one kid that was in Taekwondo <laughs> class, one kid in karate class. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to get a better understanding of right. you know, what makes karate different from... Uh, so, so you seem to be saying that the kata is something that makes karate different from the other martial arts. Is that right? Or how would you say karate is, is unique? That's a very d- difficult question to answer. But um, mm. I guess... Um, Let's, I'll talk about it from the historical background first. Sure, sure. Um, Kung, Kung Fu is the oldest one. And okay. maybe uh, your Chinese viewers can um, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I heard was that Kung, the word itself, Kung Fu, is, it basically means a way of life or a way of um, improving yourself, I think. Mm-hmm. So that's people right now in, in, in the English world, we use the term Kung Fu as like a type of martial art, but for them, it's basically a, a way of living or mm. a way of just practicing yourself, I guess. Mm. So Kung Fu, if you're, um, there are so many styles that you can't really say it's just one single kind of martial art. So there is a, how do you call it? There's, there might be a Kung Fu from one town, a Kung Fu from another town. Mm. So that started, I'm not sure about the year, but very, very early, early ages. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, that influenced the people in Okinawa, and then karate was born. Yeah. From there, karate came to mainland Japan. From, and then a Korean person, I'm not sure about the name, but he got influenced by one of the karate style, Shotokan Karate. And mm-hmm. he made his own martial art in, in Korea. That's Taekwondo. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Judo, I don't think, follows the same path. But Judo was originally in Japan, and it's more of a grappling yeah. uh, martial yeah. art and throwing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Judo, so, you make someone fall. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, it's more like yeah. <laughs> Judo's more like Judo's more like wrestling. So yes, it you know, is. Like, yes, yeah. it's not. It's yeah. not contact. It's not like you're, mm-hmm. it's not throwing punches. Yeah, so, right. But it's interesting yeah. to think back at our childhood and just the amount, the quantity of people we know in school who were doing one of these martial arts. Mm. Every, everybody had a friend that was in in, yeah. in judo class and karate wow. class, and this and it was yeah. very popular. It, it really penetrated like youth culture 
Mm. Um, like younger youth culture, you know, even in the Simpsons, Bart goes like goes to yeah. karate class. <laughs> well, we, like, have to, we have to, well, we have to, we have to mention, of course, you know, the reason why, you know, we really why Americans don't karate at all is because of Bruce Lee. Like, I mean, that has yeah. to be said, you know, really. Mm. Meanwhile, I know Bruce Lee is not Japanese, he's mm. Chinese, but but people watched Bruce Lee and they called that. This is how Americans we, have, we get up. We don't we don't get things right sometimes. So we ended up calling what Bruce Lee was doing karate. You know, mm-hmm. right. I don't I know. Understand. I don't know how, how that came into play, but literally right. people would watch Bruce Lee because so I'm older than everybody. And one of the main things that happened with me growing up was on Saturday afternoon. I mean, on Saturday morning, you would watch Saturday morning cartoons mm-hmm. after Saturday morning cartoons. There would uh, like uh, like a Bruce Lee movie would come on, you know, like oh, like really? or, like or like or or a kung fu movie or, or both. Oh, and, and that made like Americans like everybody. This was on TV all over the United States, and it made everybody like whatever that is. I wanted. It was almost like a, in this. This is in the seventies. I'm telling you, it was like a dance craze. It was oh. literally like everybody's like whatever that is. Whatever's happening, I want to. I want to do that, and yeah. um, and then the funniest thing of all about karate, uh, obviously, Bruce Lee. It, the connection to karate is doesn't even make sense, but that's what everybody did. And they go, "I want to go. I want to be like Bruce Lee, so I'm going to go learn karate," which doesn't make any sense. But <laughs> um, but the thing is, is one thing I remember for sure was that, you know, when you were growing up, and and somebody was like, "Oh, dude, like you had like." You know, like maybe you're, you know, we were young boys and it would be like, oh, like, you know, maybe there's some beef or something. You know, you're, you're like, I'm in like middle school, you know, and they're like, oh, no, no, you don't want to mess with him. He knows karate. You know, like, <laughs> like, no, and it was like a for real. People really took it seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and you were I like, see. what? He knows karate? Oh, I'm definitely uh... not. It was like. <laughs> All you had to say, you could have been, you could have been a white belt. It didn't matter. People, you just said you knew karate. It was like, oh, I, I don't want to oh. fight. That. But you just pictured, <laughs> I don't you pictured, you pictured like your like a Bruce Lee beat down. That's what you yeah. pictured. So, and so of course there was karate kid. That. Of course there was karate kid after yes. that, right? Yeah, yeah. That's later. Yeah. Though, that's later. I'm talking but, about this but, is literally like yeah. This is like you're a, talking about a, the a few years after. This is a few years after Enter the Dragon. You know. So, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, yes. Armand, even though I'm younger than you, I, I, I have the same perception as you that for a long time, people in North America just used the word karate for kind of any martial art for a while. It was like yeah, the most no, very true. popular <laughs> yeah. word. You were just right, called yeah, everything yeah, karate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, but to that point, um, uh, to that point, Yusuke, do you feel? Even just from you've seen, from what you've seen, do you feel like karate, the way it's been exported overseas, do you think it's missing something from what you know of uh, it in Japan? Um, I guess. The, I mean that it all depends on the organization. Again, mm-hmm. there are organizations that did it quite well. Took the mm-hmm. Japanese culture. Mm-hmm. and then made that prevalent within the dojos, within the classes in the States as well. But then there are some um, karate, I guess karate <laughs> dojos that only focuses mm-hmm. on the technique. Yeah. And the, the sensei, the, the, the coaches there mm-hmm. aren't super skillful. Like if I mm-hmm. don't, if I yeah, say it directly. So um, for instance, when we, well, I don't, I don't think you have to use Japanese words at all. That's not, that's not necessary. Mm-hmm. But I, I would say the atmosphere of how we practice karate can be a little different within the States and Japan. And that's understandable because, you know, um, our, I, I would say our people are different, right? Like mm-hmm. we have different way of thinking like our society works differently yeah. manner wise, you know, that, that's all yeah. different. So I wouldn't say one is over the other. I would just say it just got optimized within that certain country. And one of the differences I saw was when we, let's say there's a, 
um, a section of our practice called Kihon, which means, which literally means basics in Japanese. So mm-hmm. we would just, like in the background, you see in the dojo, we would all line up and just practice punches, right? I think you've seen mm-hmm. that in movies, you know? I, mm-hmm. I guess. And there, um, we do like, a lot of them. We, if we have two hours or three hours of practice, the first hour is all kihon. So it's all like punches, punches, at least like 50 for each hand. And uh, the instructor would, you know, point out a certain point. And when the instructor is talking, everybody lines up straight. And it's like a whole, the discipline part mm-hmm. is very strict within Japan. And I think that's because Japanese people are pretty, I would say, they're very obedient <laughs> to anything. Mm. They're, they just take everything in and, you know, they just follow what somebody says. That's just mm-hmm. one characteristic of Japanese people. So that's what we do. But when I was in the, uh, the dojos, the classes in the States, you know, it was more like, let's enjoy this um, time. Let's enjoy this class. The enjoyment part was played a little bit more crucial. It was, I, mm-hmm. I felt it was a little more crucial and that's totally understandable. And I spent my teenagers in the States. So I come mm-hmm. from that background. So I can't really have that same, that strict atmosphere in Japan as well. So I'm, I, I, my teaching style might be a little minor yeah. in Japan, but I, I feel there's a difference there. Uh, yeah, what about uh i guess the big thing with uh, I, I could be shooting in the dark here but i i feel karate first is a philosophy uh it's not even really about the fighting it's not really mm-hmm. like i know karate now i want to go kick ass in the street it has nothing <laughs> to do with that so, you know i'm saying for some people that's what they think so right. um th- very rarely were, were people like that because i remember so i had my good i had a friend his name was doug is a I lived in Washington state. He was a Filipino cat and he, his name was Doug. I, don't, I can't remember. I was in sixth grade and he was a, he was a, a black belt. He had uh, these massive trophies in his room, you know, like the, you know, he would get first place, whatever it is, you know? And he told me that it's a philosophy, you know, he goes, it's not, it's not, He's like my teach, uh, teacher. Well, what's the teacher called? Not not a sensei, but uh, it, or is it? <laughs> Shihan. Sh- 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 Shihan. Okay, so his Shihan mm-hmm. told him nobody in this class is actually allowed to fight in the real world. Mm. They, they were like, you. He, he goes, this is a philosophy. First, this is a an idea, and this is a a like a almost like a you know, like, like working out in the gym, it's, you're not supposed Mm. to use this on people. It's a way of thinking is it. So my question is, is that really the basis in karate? It's more, it's more like, yeah, it's a, it's physical exercise and, and you always trying to up your skill and you could probably never, you could do that till you die. But, but ultimately it's to bring in community and to have a spiritual aspect to it where, it's more of like a, you know, um, it's peaceful, basically. It's a peace. It's supposed to be peaceful. Is that correct? Or I, yes, yes, I think it's correct. And I think it has two sides. Uh, okay. First, um, the self-defense side. So mm-hmm. that's that's um, completely true in karate. If you take any any kata, the first movement is a block. So the very first kata we learn. It's a low block to the left mm-hmm. and all the other, you know, complicated ones, they all start with the block. So, um, it's, you know, it's a self-defense martial art. And the second part would be the in, like endurance in Japanese, we call it nintai. And the very common word we use, os, um, that basically has a t- t- Japanese characteristic, which means endurance. So, like I said, with the kihon, the basic practices, we take a lot of time doing the same movement. So people tend to run away from it very easily. But then when you get through those, you learn how to discipline yourself, how to um, not run away from your, your from the goal that you've set. So I think that's, that's, that's what karate is. It's not about, you know, learning. Oh, yes, one component would be learning how to punch strong or, you know, kick fast, but... 
Mm-hmm. I think the the basics, the fundamentals are those two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah, okay. contrarily to like a Muay Thai or something that's just like straight fighting. You know, it makes me think a little bit of of uh, what you're what both of you were just saying makes me think of like capoeira in Brazil, where mm. it's dance moves, so, so it's fighting moves, but this guy is does dancing and more of like a, a ritual. You know, it's not the mm. idea isn't let's go fight people. The idea is let's know how to defend ourselves. And there's a whole I see, I see. sort of lifestyle around it. Mm. Um, and by the way, for, for us as DJs, going in Japan was always the best. Really? Like musicians, <laughs> yeah. love, musicians love to go to Japan. <laughs> well, why yeah, is that? Yeah. I'm interested. Because there's a, well, they haven't, I think well, there's go, a, ahead, go ahead. Yeah. I will say that there's a real appreciation for the music even we make in Japan. I think um, I've always felt uh, in my trips to Japan that the audiences there make a real effort to research the, um, the music that people are making overseas and to have a real understanding of it. So when you get when you go there as a DJ or as a musician, it's very respectful to get uh, to the other side of the world and to realize that there's people who have paid so much attention to what you do and to try to understand it the way you intended it, like way more than in other countries. In mm, Japan in particular, there's yes. a real appreciation yeah. um, and an effort to understand. So when, when you go there and perform, you know, there's a, I don't, it's when keeping in mind how far we are from home, it's really rewarding. It's 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 a nice feeling uh, to know that I people see. made an effort to, to to really appreciate the music that you make. And also, aside from that, DJs are always collectors of all kinds of things because we have to buy a lot of records. I mean, just look mm. behind Armand, for example. <laughs> He's got a bunch of records. Uh, so we we all collect things that tend to be rare. And shopping in Japan is incredible. So yeah. uh, a lot of DJs yeah. love to go to Japan because we know that we will find things that can't we can't even find in America. Yeah. Even something that was made in America but became rare, someone selling it in Japan. So we it's like that's, it's like the best true. place that's to shop true. in the world. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. love there. Are, there are a lot of top, you know, places with those record stores and yeah. you know they have a whole set and I know yeah. people love to go there, you know. Yeah. yeah. Especially Relative. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, Especially in like what 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 kind of scenarios are like at where do you feel the most like I, I would say respected or like where do you feel the most attention from the Japanese you mean with, people within Japan? Uh, within Japan, yeah. Like when you come to Japan, like in what kind of scenarios would you feel that way? Um, I mean, honestly, pretty much everywhere. I, for me personally, mo- I, I've 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 gone to Tokyo many many times, but I've also mm. gone to Osaka, Kyoto. Oh. Yokohama, but yep. I've gone to Tokyo, I don't know, probably maybe close to 10 times over the years, a bunch of times. Wow. And yeah, yeah, right. And it's always maybe not maybe not 10, but yeah, but, but, but you know what it is? I think what I think I think what it is. So I have I had this thing kind of my early experiences in Japan. Like I was this could be wrong in a perception, but I was kind of thinking this is that it's relative to what you were saying, Alan, and also to what you were saying is that. I find the Japanese of culture in the, in the base of the culture, they're perfections, you know, so yes. they, they have a perfectionist ingrained thing in everybody. Totally. And so no matter what they're doing, <laughs> somebody's making sushi, somebody's doing karate, uh, everybody wants to do it as best as they can. You see, they're not, me, they the don't way, for me. ever step halfway or they don't come up to the sushi bowl and be like, Mm-hmm. They like crush it every time, you know, like, <laughs> no. do, you know, the, whatever it is that they're doing that I find in Japanese culture yeah. is, is, is unique um, yeah. and, and amazing. And that yeah, plays into right. the part where when we come to Japan, they're perfectionists in their curation of music or they're right, perfectionists right, right. in their digesting of an album in Japan. Mm. If anything that I've learned in Japan, similar to what Alain said, is that when you make an album, like not a not a single on iTunes or, or a Spotify, a full mm-hmm. length album. The most the, the 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 country in the world that appreciates and honors and respects that work you did is Japan, mm-hmm. n- number one, because yeah. I think they're looking, they're <laughs> listening to it 
in a perfectionist kind of a way. And they're, they really see the artist in, in his, in, in his story. You see what I'm saying? I everybody see. else is, everybody else is just lazy and they break off singles. <laughs> just, <laughs> just Japan, found, right? You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's really cool. It's really cool. So yeah, a, it me, might have something to do with karate some, in some small way. I mean, so, I, yeah, I think yeah. there's, there's, yeah. there's an attention to details where like for me, when I go to Japan, I am obsessed with observing the way people fold a piece of paper. <laughs> like when you're at the hotel and you check out and they give you your receipt, the way they fold the paper and put it in the en the envelope, every movement is so calculated uh, and exact. Uh, when you go and exchange money, the way they count the money, every movement has so much intention behind it. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's like they thought what the best, most efficient way yeah, for me to I see, fold I this see. piece of paper. Yeah. And yeah. you don't see that in the rest of the world. And, and you know, I think the way that we make music has a lot of attention to detail. Like I mentioned, we tend to be collectors also. We're particularly interested in details and, and in, yeah, the sort of the aspects of things that a lot of people overlook. And that's probably mm. why we're interested in Japanese culture and why something like martial arts is so fascinating to us because, ah, I see. you know, we, we love to get nerdy with something yeah. that a lot of other people, over, <laughs> a lot of people overlook the things we obsess about, you know? Right, 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 right. right. And now that you right. mentioned it, I right. think the perfection part and the endurance yeah. part that I talked about is very mm -hmm. similar, very close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess the, um, Japanese people tend to stick with one thing and just yeah. go just take that seriously let's say yeah. in, in karate uh, you know people um, at maximum spend 10 and 20 and 30 40 40 50 years practicing the same style yeah. as to if you look at it from another country's perspective let's say you did karate for five years and then you would be like okay now i want to move on to taekwondo and then, you know, do all yeah. kinds of martial arts. That's why mm -hmm. MMA, mixed martial art, was born, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I, that's, that's one, you know, I guess, advantage of other countries, especially the U.S., to take in multiple components and mm -hmm. to, you know, make that into one product. I think that's one advantage they have. But Japanese people, I guess, yeah, as a characteristic, tend to just endure, endure the same spot and then <laughs> focus on that specific field. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but that's, that's just one side of us. And yeah, yeah especially the folding paper thing, too. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah, just, I guess it can be ridiculous from some other country that you don't spend so much focus on doing such yeah. one small movement, but I guess no. that's, that's just no. how no. we are. <laughs> no. I, I remember there was a, a video on YouTube a couple, maybe like five, ten years ago, five years mm. ago that showed a special, like a technique to fold a t-shirt that people were using in stores in Japan. And you could fold your t-shirt in like three <laughs> movements and it was really efficient. And that's the kind of thing that I, I, <laughs> I, upset, I, I learned it. <laughs> I learned it. And it was and someone in Japan. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, and then there's a thing that you pull and it's folded. And I was like, I got to know how to do this. <laughs> Well, you know what right. it is? That's what it is. It's, it's the art. So what, it, what Japan yeah. has provided was, is art in, in a sense, art in perfection, you know? Mm. And art, and that's art what, that's, applied to everyday life. Yes, wow. but, 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 but in, within the art, they're striving to, like you said, make it the most efficient and, mm. and to perfect it in a sense. And it's really cool. Like, you know, I guess karate is the thing there's an underlying karate in all of Japan in a sense, you know, like the, I guess the, so, the, yeah. the, the, the ideal, you know? Right. 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 Um, right. Right. Yeah. It's pretty cool. If yeah. I, like if I yeah. talk about the, the dark side <laughs> of yeah. that cultural side, yeah. uh, since people tend to get too serious mm -hmm. and to, I, well, people in Japan think um, continuing one thing is a beauty mm -hmm. and that quitting is not good. Well, they, mm -hmm. they, you know, they percept it as quitting and not changing. So okay. that cultural background gets some people depressed. We have one of the highest depression rate around the world. And that's mm. because people get too serious for, from my perspective. Yeah. So sure. Let's yeah. say they, um, they get a job at one company after graduating college. 
they would say continue for at least how many, you know, three, four, five, ten years. And then first, let's say you want to quit in the, in the second year. They would say, oh, no, at, at least do three years. And then, okay, you do, you do three years of work and then you're like, yeah, but I still want to quit. Boss, can I quit? He'll be like, no, 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 you're too early. Do at least five. And then goes on, goes on, goes on. And then once you notice, you're working there for 20 years. <laughs> like, which wow. is like with the work that you don't even like. But the fact that you're continuing one thing gives him or her some kind of confidence. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. uh, I mean, I would say that's one way of having your confidence. But Japanese people tend to make that their only motivation, that they're continuing something. So mm-hmm. that's just one a negative way to look at our culture. culture. Yeah. And when we see other countries, especially the U.S., um, people change jobs, people, you know, inspire their, inspire their dreams, their passion. Mm-hmm. We, that's a different way of having a motivation for us because we only, you know, we only continue something as to it's a very hard thing for us to change something. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I guess that's a, you know, another side of the Japanese culture. No, that's interesting. Um, one thing that I was thinking about also, you know, and especially I think in around the world in recent years, a lot of people have become more conscious of um, sort of reducing um, bias between male and female in the mm. whether it be for job opportunities or whatever, and trying to have you know have more of an equal setting between the sexes and my, my my sort of uh, outsider's perspective i feel like especially for kids karate is pretty mixed right like it feels like it's as open to um, boys and girls is that right yes 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 yeah, yes yeah when you're um pretty young even yeah. up to high school some schools practice together even yeah. with sparring Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably more than with other sports, I think, like compared to like oh. baseball or whatever. Like, oh, I think, yeah, <laughs> you know, I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's cool. At least up to middle yeah. school, okay. um, you know, we all practice together. So, okay. another group thing that I was going to add. I was going okay, to ask, gonna... ask something outlandish, but it just came in my head, but I figured, <laughs> why not? And, uh, when I was growing up, we would do. Like, um, like fake karate. Like we would watch it from TV, and then we would like mm-hmm. practice each other, and you know, and we were right, right. like just we didn't know what we were doing. But, but um, <laughs> um, one of the things that we would all try and figure out, we we would try and figure out is what is the deadliest move in karate we would all, so I, you, is that something that you like i know that karate is not about really taking it people is. out it, it is self-defense is. well let's just say you're in a self-defense oh. situation and you, you you got you got like one move to take this dude out and it's and it's the it's the craziest move in karate and is is just there's no comeback for the other guy is there such a thing or <laughs> or is it like a combination i'm just saying is there, is there like a death blow or you know what I'm saying? Just like a a one or one kick that's like ah, oh, um, he's done. I I think the most lethal movement yeah would be um oh, with our front kick yeah um, I can't show it to you right now but like no. we <laughs> kick <laughs> um w- with our feet there's yeah. a this is a toe and there's yeah, a the hard ball, part the ball right of here. your foot the, the, the ball of mm-hmm. your foot it's not literally the ball. It's the space yeah. between the ball because the ball is here, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if this is your toe, Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even. Know. Yeah, this, this is the this spot thing on you the kick foot. With. This yeah. section on the foot, right here, right? So we lift up our yeah. toe and we kick yeah. with this part. Oh, Ooh. in there? Because that's where the bone is. Yes. So we don't kick like this. It's damn. This. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. when we do the front kick, we it's like we pierce through the opponent with that part, like this. Whoa. Uh, with the, okay. But with the front kick, yeah. um, it doesn't have a lot of re- a lot of reach. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I guess the most lethal one would be, would be to do a roundhouse kick, not yeah. not with here, but with yes. this here, here, with this. Yeah, yeah, the, like this. underneath. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I got it. So yeah, that makes sense. I, I think. And, that's by the way, it's cool. It's cool you said roundhouse kick because that was that was our favorite one. <laughs> it, it, was. it was. It's the most like. Um, like we used to break dance too in this era. Uh. And the, it was like when you would break dance, you would do this thing called the windmill 
And when you do the uh-huh. mill, it's just like everybody just looked at it like, okay, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so the, the, the roundhouse kick is similar. It's like when you right, do right. it, it's, like, it's, just, it's, just be- it's beautiful. It's a beautiful move. So, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so actually, that makes sense. someone here. Yeah, in the temple. Right, yeah. yeah, in the temple. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. And I'm curious. So um, when, I, when I became a DJ, um, I was a teenager. I was pretty young for a DJ. And, and I... I'd specialized in a type of DJing that's very technical. And I was doing something similar to someone in, to, to like learning katas in karate. Like I was learning mm. how to scratch and everything is based on moves. And you, I was teaching myself these moves one after the other, very methodically and kind of building up an arsenal of moves that I could use in my DJing it really was like a martial art. And I remember, mm-hmm. you know, some of them I would, it would take me weeks or even months to really master. Wow. It. And, and uh, so I'm curious, you know, maybe it's kind of similar to the question our mom just asked, but was there one kata or one move that was maybe like the toughest for you, for you to learn? Like what was one thing that when you finally mastered it, you were like, Oh, I can't believe I finally got this one. Oh. Well, obviously I haven't mastered all 26 kata of my style yet. Okay. But um, I think the biggest breakthrough was around three years of practice. After three, four Mm -hmm. years of practice, that I learned how to drop my weight down. This is one of the key key characteristics Mm -hmm. and key um, components of karate is this drop concept. Uh, if I explain it a little in a little more detail, um, yeah, please. we don't move our body down with force. We let the gravity just fall our body down. So you know, in in like in elementary school, when you like standing in a playground and someone knocks the, the, behind your knee and you fall down. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. had that experience? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You know sure. that sensation yeah. of just, just falling suddenly. Yeah, yeah. We we intentionally make that to move. What? And so, so that's in I, some so kind yeah, of force, like some, is it called chi or something or? Oh, it's, it's completely logical. <laughs> okay. How, okay. How you stand up <laughs> yeah. in order for you to maintain your weight. Let's say you're walking, right? The yeah. muscle you mm. use to stop yourself is the front thigh. Those muscles, yep. you know, halt your movement, right? But mm-hmm. if you let go of that tension, you're going to fall, obviously, because there's nothing to stop your movement. So what we do in sparring in, in kata is first we put the weight on the front leg. Maybe you can picture it. <laughs> you mm-hmm. can put the weight on the front leg. And if you keep the weight there, y- your front thigh is going to be tired, right? Because of all the weight. But once you let go of that weight, you suddenly shift forward, drop forward. And that's different from kicking the ground and running. You can kind of picture it. The, yeah. the, dropping yeah. sensation and yeah, you yeah. just just moving yeah. forward but that does and that create does that create like momentum and and yes. and also reach a somewhat tricking your opponent somewhat i'm assuming right yes 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 mm-hmm. because yeah. like 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 you got knocked behind your knee you, mm-hmm. you can't notice that and yeah. someone around you wouldn't sense that coming right it just happens mm-hmm. so suddenly yeah, yeah. But, but if you compare that with the movement of you just going down then you can see him go down, right? In the next split second. Yeah. So we use that sudden uh, momentum to move forward. And that's practiced in katas. When we move wow. in a front stance, we don't kick the ground and walk. We rather drop and shift our weight forward. So mm. that sensation, I couldn't understand that for the first few years. Mm. But um, there, was a one, there was one exercise, well, I did after um, in the summer practices, summer karate camps, we would do this front stance movement for like two hours <laughs> and our legs would be so tired that <laughs> you can't kick the floor anymore and that yeah. we have to rely on this drop concept. Mm. So <laughs> that, yeah, through, cool. through that practice, I understood also oh, this is what, you know, using the gravity, using this yeah drop sensation is and that was the i think the biggest breakthrough in my karate career and everybody if you do karate you have to go through that process and 
if like my my metric to um to seeing if the the teacher is good or not is whether he can break that down logically and tell that to his students mm. so yeah, yeah that's that's one that's of my amazing cut that story that amazing. Yeah. that's really cool it's really cool yeah that's, that's my like that's you, my favorite that's like, that's like you alan doing some <laughs> when you're on the crossfader and yeah, you, yeah. You, i'm watching you scratch but the sound <laughs> i'm your hands aren't doing the sound i'm here yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what that is. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Just like, 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 there's something happening, that. and I'm watching yeah. your hands, and I'm like, that sound. Your hands are not doing that sound. And well, there's, a, there's a lot of there's freakies going on in the in the there's crossfader. Little illusions. So, there's little illusions. Yeah, there's yeah. illusions, and there's yeah. And, there's and it's like the crab crossfader. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Yusuke, we can send you some videos of this stuff if you're interested. Oh yeah, really good. <laughs> there's similarities there where like yeah. in anything that's a very uh, just focused, advanced kind of discipline. There's a there's there's breakthroughs where you figure out. Uh, I don't want to say shortcuts, but a way to do something without all the effort that you would mm. think it takes. You know, and it's almost like illusion tricks. Right, right, um, right, right. It's also letting. Uh, it's also letting go. Like it's like yeah, training training yourself uh, to be really good, and then you know you know your your a b c d but then all of a sudden you between b and c you go like it's almost like you just like it's you know, you're it's just, it's, right? exactly it's un, it's just you just find some amazing thing and you're like i never did that before and you're yeah. like I, and then you try and do it again and you want to make yeah. sure you can get it again it's, it's right, interesting right, yeah. right. I, but I you have to let any, go you have to let go yeah, yeah 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 exactly i think with anything yeah. that has some sort of physicality to it you reach these little moments where you you don't have to think about it with your mind that much anymore. And, right, right, right. Everything right. just kind of flows flows uh-huh. like the way it's supposed to, and you don't have to intentionally think about every piece of yes, it anymore. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, <clears throat> I think yeah. um, one one thing that I think about to major movements, um, uh, you know, so natural is to pay attention to the phrase and the word you use to express your, um, your new findings. So mm-hmm. I use the verb drop, but for others, it might be the shift, right? Or the, mm-hmm. I don't know, the change or the turn, or uh, I'm not sure. But mm-hmm. so when I, when I coach my kids, I always ask the question, like, what did you find? Like, what was the most, what clicked in your head? Mm-hmm. That way you can really get their expression out. And it's mm-hmm. not my words that's being enforced on them. It's their own, you know, phrase and it's their own way of expressing that certain movement. But we're all referring to the same thing. So I think language plays a pretty big role in making your movements, you know, natural and to just let it flow. And to, like yeah, you said, opt- opt- optimizing. Yeah. 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 That's super mm-hmm. interesting. Um, yeah. I, I just kind of have one last question that I thought of. I was curious about with the fact that you have a YouTube channel with, you know, which is obviously a, a very modern approach. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about how Japan is very traditional is how, how do people react to that in, in your field? Oh. Does anyone think it's, does anyone oppose the idea of youtube like what's is there like a culture like a generational uh, within japan there, right yeah 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 um <laughs> um i would say um, well the people around me they're not well they're not really like against it or anything because they know me as a person mm-hmm. but i would say um uh, like maybe from the the Japanese karate organizations, the, Jap- J- J- the Japan Karate Federation, and all those big organizations in Japan might not like what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not sure because <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't have any connect. Like I don't want to make connection with them because I don't want them to be in my way. That's why mm-hmm. I'm I am mm-hmm. only doing it to the international audience because once I do something within the country, like 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 you're saying, um, in Japan. Uh, and there's another side of Japanese culture where we a- a- always um, sense what others are, what others are thinking mm-hmm. because we can't be really, um, it's really, really hard for us to follow the passion and to find the passion. It's more of 
finding what others are doing and to not fall out, out of that tr- um, out of that trend and to go with it. Well, so, tradition, um, tradi- know, Japanese loves tradition. They stay with yeah. tradition. tradition. Yeah. 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 yeah, tradition. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm doing, um, you know, delivering Japanese teachings, karate teachings on YouTube on, in English to other countries. Maybe for some mm. master, they might they might not like what I'm doing. But then, yeah, that's what's interesting. Karate is not there, yeah. so yeah. why why care about them, right? That, that's, yeah, that's just my stance. Sure. It's cool that you're doing yeah. that, you know, because yeah. it's um, Thank you. you know, karate needs to come from the source, you know. And I think, mm-hmm. like I was saying to you, me growing up, it's like people thought Bruce Lee did karate, you know, <laughs> Jack mm-hmm. Jack literally karate. Bruce Lee did yeah. kung fu. He never did karate, but literally. I, I I guarantee you, people did in the United States went, you know, went to to karate classes and got hip to it, you know, in their at their green belt. What do you mean, Bruce Lee doesn't do karate? <laughs> like, you know, it's like you know, it's just you know, yeah, so yeah. It's so good. you're bringing it's awareness. Good that, it's good that it's good. Yeah, exactly. It's good that you're mm. telling you know you're putting thank a message you, out there you. from the from from the source, you know, which is mm, which is yeah. key. So it's good. Yeah, and I try my best to stay flat on anything. So yeah. some Japanese people critique Taekwondo because Taekwondo originated from karate and they say that it's a degraded mm-hmm. version of karate, which I think is total nonsense <laughs> because they have their own, you know, they evolved their karate mm-hmm. into something that's more spectacular with kicks. So mm-hmm. I try to stay, you know, flat in my opinion to stay yeah. fair. So um, a lot of the international audiences like that although I come from a Japanese culture, I don't, you know, prioritize and make that the top thing. And like yeah. me looking down on others, which is ridiculous. Yeah, too. Sure. Sure. yeah. great. Well, cool. Thanks yeah. so much for talking to us. <laughs> yeah, thank, no, you, thank you so much thank for you. having me. Yeah, sure. like whenever you sure. come over to Japan, <laughs> I can host you at the Karate yeah, Masters or yeah. anywhere. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. I'm definitely, we'll invite you. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get my Great. roundhouse right. Got to work on my roundhouse. <laughs> yeah. I'll teach you that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to stretch a little bit before. But yeah. 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 yeah we'll, we'll warm up. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Yusuke. All right. Thanks for having right. me. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Thanks. Okay. Have a good day. Bye. You too. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.